Hi, this is Mark from learnhowtogarden.com <coughs> and in today's episode uh, of our video blog we're doing an update on our growing chilies. Now, as we said in the first uh, episode when we sowed these, chilies are quite interesting. They're, they're without doubt the most popular thing that we're growing at the moment. They're quite fashionable. Um, all these were sown on exactly the same day, um, uh, eight weeks ago, uh, and it's to show you why it's important that you know chilies have a long growing season. Uh, we've got uh, Habanero 7 pot here. This is from Trinidad. Um, looks wonderfully innocent, doesn't it? It's in the top six uh, strongest chilies in the world. Uh, this little beast, when it grows, um, was actually once defined as a biological weapon. So uh, interesting. Notice that uh, I'm handling them with the jiffies. Even at this point, you really don't want to be rubbing your fingers on the leaves. This is Rocatillo, very nice, tasty, flavoursome chilli. Uh, chilies are measured in Scovilles. If you want an explanation of that, if you look on one of our uh, written blogs, you'll be able to see it. Uh, but if we were to take these as sort of, you know, one to ten for heat, the little one here, we're probably talking two to three. You know, really nice, nice paprika, nice and a lot of food. This is my favourite chilli that we grow. This is Ring of Fire. It makes a scorchingly hot cayenne pepper. Uh, I just love it. Uh, we make chilli oil with this one. Um, it's probably hovering around seven, seven out of ten for heat, perhaps eight. It's, it's a warm old chilli, but brilliantly easy to grow. This... Uh, seven pot, uh, the reason it's called seven pot, so the story goes, is that one chilli would give you enough heat and flavour in seven pots uh, of food in Trinidad. It's probably 12 to 13 out of 10, it really is like that. Um, we've grown them, you know, quite slowly, they need a lot of heat to germinate and it's far, far too late now, far too late to grow any of these from seed. Your best bet is to go to a specialist, um, there's quite a few on the web, uh, I still think Simpson Seeds has one of the best um, collections of plants, uh, chilli plants for sale, uh, and Matt Simpson's also written a book on it. Um, they're very good, but there are one or two others out there. What you don't want to be doing is paying £3.50 to £4 for a single plant of this, or any of the sort of Dorset Nagas or any of those. Um, believe me, any of these are hot enough, and how you grow them can actually sort of change dramatically how hot they are. What we're going to do at the end of the year, at the end of the growing season, uh, my son who is a chef and a couple of his friends, uh, one who's from Trinidad, have agreed to take uh, the blind chilli challenge. And basically we're growing about eight types of chilli uh, and they're going to blind taste them, which I think is incredibly uh, useful for all of us who will be videoing it because we can see the effect that some of these chilies will have. Uh, obviously the eldest one is only 22 because if you'd have thought about this would you really be tasting some of these chilies blind? I certainly uh, wouldn't have got involved in this. Uh, and they have decided that uh, the winner gets um, enough money to buy the beer for the evening and the loser is the one who supplies the money to buy the beer for the evening so we actually win all ways round. We get you know, a good experiment and it doesn't cost us anything. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do now is uh, just show you how to pop these on and I'll talk a bit about compost um, that we're going to use for our chilies. I think chilli compost is one of those things that a lot of myths have <coughs> grown up around. There's as many myths as you get with all specialist growers. What we have here uh, is basically a 50-50 mix of a peat-free compost, um, a soil-based compost because the chilies are going to be in these pots a long time. We grow our chilies in pots um, and that gives us some weight and it means it's easier to water. Uh, and then a handful of vermiculite and a handful of perlite. This is what I use. I find it holes feed very well. Uh, you don't overfeed them and it keeps them drained enough that they grow well. Um, we're going to use some little sort of three, three and a half inch pots. You don't really need to overpot plants right at the beginning. Um, what's quite important is with chilies that they sit just about on the surface. Notice that we are trying to avoid touching the stem. Um, that's not because, you know, it's particularly hot, it's just that you can do a lot of damage. Once you've got it potted, use your fingers to press down, gently press your compost down. 
and that's it really dead simple like I say um, I think it's important to have a soil based compost to give us that sort of buffering if you like it sort of evens out uh, the watering and the growing I tend to use square pots at this point in time purely because it, we haven't got huge amounts of room none of us have enough room either in our greenhouses um, and I think square pots are just easier. They just fit together. Don't you? You've got no loose, lost space like you do with round pots. Um, and if you're trying to grow chilies on your windowsill, and quite a lot of you will be, a lot of people say you can. I've never been wildly successful with it myself, I would have to say. Uh, I think it might be a worthwhile investing you know, in grow lights. At the end of the day, the worst greenhouse or the worst cold frame it's still going to get light 360 degrees um, with the best will in the world the best windows ain't going to get it from one direction so very easy very simple uh, like I say if you look on our written blog posts uh, there's a recommendation of various chilies that uh, we're growing and why there's an explanation about why chilies are hot uh, and what it actually is in the chilies that makes them uh, so hot and so powerful uh, and in two or three weeks we'll be showing you how these have progressed don't feed the chilies at this point uh, like most plants you've just potted on there is more than enough food in the compost that we're using um, to grow these and overfeeding plants is never a good idea overfeeding chilies um, actually means that they're never quite as hot one of the tricks that the professional growers use if they're trying to sort of enter chilies for the world's hottest chili um, and the thing with the world's hottest chili is it'll change every year you know there's five or six that could grow it for you but they'll take all the chilies off the plant except perhaps two and then they'll grow the plant under huge amounts of stress you know they'll let it dry out they'll bend it over um, if you can hear a clip clipping it's not anything wrong with your computer it's my Siamese cat sitting on the roof of my conservatory uh, We'd normally be filming uh, in one of the greenhouses at this point in time, but um, we've got a robin's nest in one of the greenhouses, so we're trying not to disturb her at the minute. She's got three eggs, and I'm hoping that uh, she'll manage to hatch them and get them out without the Siamese cat meeting them. Anyway, and always, especially with things, you know, when you're doing two or three types of the same plant with chilies, make sure that you use you know clearly defined labels a lot of the time you think oh I'll do it in a minute and they're all mixed up and they all look fairly similar I mean it's easy for me to say these are three I've only got three out to work with but there are about 40 in the propagator it'd be quite easy um, if you've got lots of these little labels that are quite dirty and you think oh, you know what do I do with them a quick tip that my mom told me is if you just dip them into some quite sort of weak bleach in a jam jar or a cup leave them for three or four minutes clean as a pin much easier than trying to scrub them Anyway, until next time, that's uh, how to pot on your chilies.